see what's left. Okay. And then we'll decide what we want to do. All right. And I'll send you some, I'll send you a document. Instructions. All right. Thank you. some work and we can get to the Is Stefan coming back? Well, I heard from you. Yes, they all Commissioner Hopkins. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Uh, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Young. Here. Commissioner Burrell. <laughs> Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Gage Watts. Commissioner Cothran. Here. Commissioner Atkins. Here. Commissioner Chavez. Here. Commissioner Lazarus. Here. And Commissioner Epperson. Here. That makes uh, seven of 12, member, uh, 12, 12 members present, and that does constitute a quorum. All right. Um, Commissioner Cothran, would you give us an invitation? Our minds being clear. Let us pray. Today, my Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the business we are about to partake of, my Heavenly Father, that we might do it most decently and in order, so you can get all the praise and all the glory. We thank you for all the men and women that are assembled here. And most of all, we actually protect this parish, protect the city, protect this nation, give them the best rights in the Son of Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> members of the military and uh, veterans can give me a proper salute. All of us put your hand over your heart. Say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioners Cothran and Lazarus. I believe we have three agenda editions today. Is that correct, Mr. Clark? That is correct. Uh, so, there are three potential agenda editions so, that I'm aware of. So the one, one that I have is to move Major Justin Thompson of the U.S. Army to visitors. Uh, is that for today? Yes. Uh, for today. Another one is to move uh, Dr. Tim Magner uh, to visitors today from uh, agenda item 11.12. And then another one is to add um, visitors from the uh, Louisiana State University Medical Center uh, as, uh, on Thursday to discuss their wastewater treatment um, update. Correct. Okay. So I have a I have a motion from Commissioner Atkins, second from Commissioner Jackson. Uh, would anyone? Uh, so we need to open a public hearing about this. Uh, public hearing uh, for these three agenda item additions is now open. Anyone who wants to speak for or against adding them to our agenda, please come forward. I see no one coming forward, so the public hearing is closed. Uh, would anyone like to speak about these? Commissioner Atkins? Um, I just know that Dr. Magner has, has uh, items he'd like to discuss with and um, it was, he was going to be on a future date, but since he's here, we just thought we'd move him up and he's ready to speak, so we'll just do it now. Terrific. Okay, I think we're ready to vote. Uh, oh, are there other people? Oh. Chairman, I would yes. like to uh, ask that, that the, uh, the speakers be in the order in which the motion was made. 
uh, Major Justin Thompson, then Mr. Magna, certainly, and then the first of them. Certainly, and Major Thompson is here on leave and is getting ready to be deployed. Very good. Um, so, shall we vote? Yes. And that motion carries with eight in support and none in opposition. Um, that brings us now to uh, citizens' comments, so uh, where citizens are asked uh, to fill out a comment card in the foyer out front, and they can return it right here to the box at my left. Um, we have received at this point two requests uh, for citizens' comments, which have been submitted to the chair, and comments are limited to three minutes. Thank you. So the first citizen to comment is Tim Euler. Please come forward. Good, af good afternoon. My name is Tim Euler, and I uh, want to just take a moment to say thank you to the parish. Last week, our dog ran away. Some of you up here are familiar with that and have called or texted, and I just want to say thanks. Um, we haven't yet found her but we know that uh, we will. I, I want to just comment on three things. The first thing I want to say is I made a couple of Facebook posts that ended up with over 700 shares. What that showed to me is that Shreveport can come together. There's an opportunity for us if we get behind the right causes and the right purposes for us to come together. Um, that has completely blown our family away that a simple lost dog would get 700 shares. I can share a Bible verse and get two likes. But I share about a dog, and I get 700 shares. And it's hit everything. And we chuckle about it, but that's reality, folks. The second thing I want to say is I, I called Commissioner John Paul Young, and he responded and connected me with animal control. His quick response was no surprise to me. It demonstrates a manner in which he has faithfully served and worked for his district. While Commissioner Young's not my commissioner, it is noted that he truly has a public servant's heart and as chairman of the animal services and a leader our family desires commissioner young to say thank you the second thing I, I, or the third thing i want to bring up is i need to thank uh, mr samuel i've sat in these cham chambers for the last several weeks months for other reasons we can talk about later and i've heard animal services has been pushed challenged been told they don't care that's just not true. Within 15 minutes of Mr. Samuel finding out that our dog was lost, he was on the phone with me. I was sending him text messages, sending him pictures. My wife went down the next day and the picture was already at Animal Services. And so Dr. Wilson, I need to look at you and your staff and say, well done. You, and I need to just look at you. I know you're getting ready to head out the door, but I need to just say that that's a reflection of your leadership. Thank and so I'm here on behalf of my family just to say thank you. Appreciate and thank you to your staff. In conclusion, while we haven't found CC yet, we're still hopeful that we will, um, we've learned something during this challenging time. Friends help friends. A community came and will come together during times of needs. We can take this very simple but tragic time for our family and learn that the citizens of Shreveport really are good people. They truly give more than they take. It's a few, it is the few that are causing havoc, but the majority of us love our neighbor as the Bible calls us to. So I want to stand before you all, represent my family, and on behalf of my family, we just want to say thank you, Caddo. Well done. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Euler. You, and you're welcome. Uh, the next commenter is Marvin Muhammad. Please come forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. Um, I want to take a brief moment. Uh, I had the privilege uh, to sit in, in the Juvenile Justice uh, Committee meeting earlier today at 1 p.m. And I want to say that I was truly educated. Uh, I was actually shocked to find out that at Juvenile, they have been working with a deficit. Uh, for the last untold amount of years that has put a tremendous uh, burden on the agency to perform everyday simple operations. Um, what you have before you, I believe, is re resolution number 22 of 2023 that will, in fact, give this, the citizens of this parish 
an opportunity to 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 make a decision. Do they want to actually invest into young people? It's no secret that Shreveport has inside of its inner core problems. It's no secret that Shreveport inside of the urban core has problems with its juveniles, with, with, with its young people. The introduction of 3.5 additional meals that will bring a little bit over $5 million annually over for the next 15 years is a step, I say a step, in the, in the right direction because I'm sure it's going gonna, it's gonna to be so much more that will be needed. Oft times in the city, not the parish, but in the city, you can hear, well, what are we going to do? But this is something that not only government could do, but all of the citizens can do. And I believe that uh, if package right, if message right, I do believe this is something that, well, I know, I can say right now that I'm leading very favorably if this was put on the ballot in voting yes. So I'll be looking forward to see uh, what this uh, uh, commission does with that resolution uh, because it's something that we definitely really need. And we have to think prevention before detention, prevention before incarceration. Even if some of these children was to receive juvenile life, get out at 21 years of age, be assimilated back into the dominant society to what and to do what uneducated no skills no problems now we have an even bigger problem going over to ccc we don't want these people coming back into into the dominant society sitting at home breaking in homes while we at work so let's do something let's do it by supporting uh resolution number what was that 23 22 or 2023 Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. All right, the next uh, agenda item is visitors, and our first visitor is Major Justin Thompson of the U.S. Army. Welcome, Major. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Epperson. Uh, Mr. Chair, proud to uh, Major Thompson speaking. I'd just like to introduce him. Uh, Major Justin Thompson is a Caddo Parish uh, resident. He was, uh, he attended Southwood High School, uh, Northwestern State University, uh, entered the military, United States Army. He promoted to major, I think, last February. Yes, sir. Uh, and he's a proud representative of Caddo Parish. He's in the process now of being transitioning to be uh, deployed. I'll let him speak about what he can speak relative to that. So I just wanted to uh, have him to come and visit with us uh, as he came to visit with his family prior to being redeployed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Major Justin Thompson. All right, good evening, everybody. I want to say thank you for having me here. And one thing I always tell everybody is I'm always a proud member of the United States Army, and I'm always a proud native of Shreveport, Louisiana, and I constantly thank you all for the support that you all continue to show myself along with everybody else that served. So this Friday, I'm getting ready to head to Poland to support garrison operations there. I'm a logistics officer, so I get to support the garrison by ordering and tracking parts and just taking care of the logistical needs of the troops over there. So I'm proud to get some time back in Europe to help take care of that mission. And then I just want to lastly end things by saying thank y'all for what y'all do to not only the commissioners, but to the concerned citizens that are here in the city as well. And just keep on keeping on. Thank you. And before you take his seat, I'd like to mention that uh, he's the son of Erlene and James Thompson. Uh, James Thompson is his father, Vietnam era veteran uh, and a Vietnam veteran. And uh, the Veteran Celebration Committee had the proud honor of recognizing our first father and son honorees out of our 12 year history. And that was Major Justin Thompson and his dad, uh, Sergeant James Thompson. Thank you. All right, thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner Epperson. Um, Major, please stay for a moment at the podium. Um, Commissioner Atkins has a comment. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Major, Major Thompson, I just wanted to thank you for your service to the United States and your service to the United States Army. And thank you for continuing to wave the Caddo Parish and Treeport flag as you travel around the world mm -hmm. uh, doing your duty and, and serving the citizens, the citizens of the United States. So thank you very much. We appreciate you. Thank you, thank you Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Atkins. Commissioner Cawthron. Yes, Major. Uh, as a retired Sergeant Major, it gives me great pleasure to not only speak to you, but to know the humility that I heard in your description of your job. <clears throat> Anytime I hear just, I know I'm dealing with a very humble man. Mm -hmm. And I wish you the best in your deployment. And I look forward to seeing you upon your return. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Cawthorn. Commissioner Jackson. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Acting President. Uh, uh, Major, I appreciate you. I echo everybody else. Uh, thank you for your service to this country. Um, we can sit here without fear, intimidation of a uh, attack, uh, foreign or broader, and now domestic, because you wake up every day to defend this country. And so thank you for that. Uh, you said something uh, that I often um, have to talk to people about. You said, you tell people that you are a proud citizen of Shreveport. Yes, sir. And more often than not, we meet folks who leave Shreveport. And I tell folks, folks leave Shreveport, and they find it better to tell folks that they're from Shreveport, or they were from Shreveport, or they lived in Shreveport, all past tense, and nothing in the present and future tense. And so uh, I appreciate you for representing and putting Shreveport Cattle Parish on the map, um, because too often we find people fleeing from here. Of course, you got to go abroad because work and the mission sends you there. We're looking for it and we're praying that you make it back home safe and sound. And uh, hopefully, the, you know, there's a hedge of protection around you and your family. So thank you for what you do. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Uh, Commissioner Epperson. Uh, before you leave, I just want to state uh, if you have an opportunity, if, if, if it's public, please review his resume. You're talking about a representative from Caddo Parish. Review his resume. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Epperson. Major, I just want to repeat um, everyone's thanks on behalf of all the people of Caddo Parish for your service to our country and our prayers that you come back safe and sound. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next visitor is Dr. Tim Magner. for the be here with you to do on some of the criminal justice initiatives that the chamber has been involved with uh, in conjunction with the the parish um, the city Shreveport SPD etc um, the first one uh, really began uh, last year in the middle of last year uh, on it, there was a, a spasm of violence uh, early in the year and Shre uh, Shreveport Caddo was on pace to be one of the worst years 22 was to be one of the worst years for violent crime in addition, it was the uh, second worst two-year span of juvenile crime. And so there was an effort uh, to get some of the parties together to talk about and, and really map the, the resource landscape that was available to help support, in particular, juvenile uh, uh, offenders and so, or to help uh, address juvenile offenders. So we brought together the city of Shreveport, the Caddo Parish, uh, Caddo Parish Sheriff's Office, the um, school board, the DA, Shreveport Police, Children and Family Services. And the goal was really to look at the elements that bring together uh, or that impact public safety. Crime response, which is the, uh, the uh, police and, and sheriff's office. Crime intervention, which is a whole host of things uh, that are, are done to try and particularly through the school system, but through other 
uh, organizations that try and, and um, once uh, something you know has begun to happen or to uh, folks uh, in post incarceration and then crime prevention which is really uh, a lot of the pre services and a lot of the wraparound services and so what we really looked to that is how do we how do we assess the, the capacity and the elements of the community that uh, address each one of these things and so the the as you zoom out uh, there's a lot of stuff that's going on some of these are programs I didn't realize it's an eye chart but um, some of these are programs some of these are projects some of these are initiatives offices etc but really just trying to get our arms around what what are the resources and are there ways that we can facilitate or um, collaboration and, and, and connection between and among the various resources um, one of the areas that was a particular focus in that group was looking at truancy um, as I'm sure you're aware uh, there's about uh, there are about 6,000 students uh, in Caddo Parish who are chronically truant um, and chronic truancy is one of the things that often leads to um, an adverse interaction with the criminal justice system and so dealing with that I know uh, the harbor which is a wraparound services uh, effort was put in place uh, in, in response to that and those efforts and conversations are ongoing so we'll be meeting um, at the harbor um, later this month to sort of get the band back together uh, to look now at the truancy efforts that were put in place early in the year to also understand the the um, status of the harbor and to begin to look at the the types of services that can be put in place to help address that um, on the adult side about uh, October or November of last year, uh, the sheriff um, really uh, became in crisis with the uh, Caddo uh, Correctional Center. Uh, the center was built for about uh, 1,070 individuals. He was upwards about 15, 26, or 27, I think, at the outset, and um, that's un truly unsustainable. And so he sent up a flare. They had a meeting of the, the um, joint uh, uh, crisis committee, the, the um, Caddo Joint. Um, criminal justice committee uh, to really begin to look at this a number of uh, suggestions came out particularly with regard to public defenders uh, the defense judges etc so I reached out to um, the US Department of, of Justice their Bureau of Justice assistance and they provided us a grant um, through the Criminal Justice Institute to really look at the elements that are contributing to overcrowding at CCC and that's really a systemic look uh, it is it's a complex process how people move from here to there and then what happens to them um, once they're there so we're uh, it's very similar to an effort that was done in 2008 um, by the same group uh, that resulted in the uh, criminal justice coordinating committee that uh, that met uh, back in November but this is an opportunity to relook at uh, many of these uh, of these trends in particular um, so that task force brings together folks from um, the Caddo Parish, from the district attorney's office, the sheriff, the judges, the clerk of court, uh, the public defender's office, SPD, and folks from the city, again, to take a more holistic look at this time at, at the adult population, in particular the issues at CCC. CJI, um, they're analyzing data. We've gotten um, 10 years of data from the sheriff's office. We've gotten 10 years of data from the clerk's office, and we're looking retrospectively to look at patterns both for intake as well as disposition. Um, right now, uh, there are, I think, anywhere <coughs> between 900 and 1,000 people in CCC awaiting trial. So we're trying to understand that because obviously the, the more you bring in, the less you put out. Um, that creates the bottleneck. So we're trying to understand what those exigencies are creating those bottlenecks to try and understand that. So CJI is really designed, um, their, their effort is designed to essentially provide us with information, facilitate uh, conversations between and among the various parties, provide research and best practice from around the country, and then draft a final report and provide implementation support for those recommended changes. CJI is not here to write a report and make recommendations. They're really help, here to help us facilitate a conversation between and among the various entities on the task force to make our own determination about where, <coughs> what we need to do and, and where we need to go forward. Um, the task force's role then will be to examine the data findings to identify the pressure points, policies, and practices that are contributing to overcrowding, and then collaboratively develop recommendations for local policy and practice changes that are necessary to alleviate this pressure, and then to review and approve the final report that will be presented to, to you all and the, and the public as well. 
There are really two phases to this. The first phase is the data systems and analysis phase, and then the second phase is the implementations and policies. So we're very much in the first phase right now. We're looking at admissions data, at the data in, in the time serve, so uh, disposition data, what happens to people once they get put into the system. We've just had the admissions portion of the conversation, and um, early in June we'll, we'll be um, talking about the disposition data on the other side. So in terms of a timeline, this is where we are right now. We're at the first phase in the process, um, getting the data analysis and system assessment. Then we'll identify the, the drivers that are leading to uh, jail population. Then the task force will convene um, with that information and data and begin to make recommendations to, to change policy or make policy recommendations to develop new policies. And then a final report will come out later this year. Next steps, I mentioned the next um, Joint Advisory Committee will be meeting uh, at the end of the month at the Harbor, again, to look at the juvenile justice in particular. Uh, the CJI team is actually here in Shreveport this week. They're meeting with additional judges. They're talking to some of the patrol officers in SPD and, um, and the sheriff's office to get a, a more holistic look. They've also talked to um, people in, in mental health. They've talked to folks at CCC. They've, they've really tried to make sure they have a robust understanding of all of the elements of the, of the system. They'll be back in early June for the second data report. And then we'll have additional task force meetings over the summer to begin to dive into the data and, and look at what the recommendations and opportunities are to make any sorts of policy changes. I'm also in discussions with them today um, about the possibility of, of adding a, the juvenile component, given how critical it is for us to understand, for lack of a better term, sort of life cycle challenges that we're facing with young people in particular being involved in violent crime and some of the folks who um, age out into the adult system are also involved there. Right now, we don't have a way to see that through a single pane of glass. So the ability to be able to link the juvenile data work to the adult data work may give us, again, a broader understanding of the patterns that um, occur, and we may be able to um, identify additional intervention points um, earlier in the process rather than once people are already um, committed to the justice system. So in sum, um, if we've learned nothing else, it's a very complex problem, but it requires an integrated set of long and short-term solutions. Um, a shared set of data and a common understanding are vital to make good public policy. So that's, the, that's where we're starting the process. Mutual trust is essential to enable changes that may be needed within, between, or among the participating entities. I've, had, I've spent time with all of the, the different groups and I can tell you to a person that they are all doing the best they can with what they have. And the, the real question is, can we, can we create opportunities for them to work more efficiently? Can we find better ways for them to work together, et cetera? So this is really about um, treating this as a system and identifying opportunities within and among each of these entities to be able to make positive changes or to be able to create new policies to facilitate the work between and among them. So that mutual trust is really important, and that's something we've worked really uh, hard to try and instill. The changes may require additional funding, but we don't yet know where or how much, and I think that's clearly one of the, the elements that we'll be looking at with any sort of changes in policy or practice. And then our hope is that recommended changes to the overall system will help make it more efficient and more effective so that public safety will be improved. We know this is, this is different than um, you know, boots on the street, but once we take people off the street and incarcerate them, having ways that are efficient to get them through and appropriate to get them through the process um, becomes critically important, not only to manage issues like overcrowding at CCC, but helps us um, instill additional confidence in a system because it, it operates most effectively for everyone involved. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Magner. Uh, are there any questions from commissioners? about this presentation? Okay, I don't see any, oh, no. Commissioner Cawthorn, are you all? You, did you want to speak? Good afternoon. Uh, do you have, I, I saw on the presentation that you had a uh, timeline of this summer? Yes. Okay. That's our hope, yes. Okay, so I guess my question is, from today's date until the summer, what happens? That's one question. Okay. Second question is, 
will the uh, CJI task force be talking to any of the commissioners while they're here? Um, they 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 said they'd be, they'd be happy to, and okay. I can certainly arrange that if you'd like. And the advisory committee or group, who who's on your uh, advisory committee? Okay, so uh, the so for the advisory committee. Um, it is there were uh, two representatives from um, the commission uh, commissioner stormy gage watts and um, uh, commissioner talaferro so there's an opportunity for to update that um, we had uh, two uh, representatives from the city council two from the school board uh, we had uh, clay walker from juvenile services um, we had folks from dcfs we had amy bowman um, and uh, chief white from uh, excuse me, T. Smith from the uh, SPD, Sheriff Prater participated along um, with Brian Wilson, uh, his data folks. Uh, we also had um, um, Wilbert Pryor from the DA's office, and my role was really just there as, as a facilitator. So it was really, and then uh, Erica and uh, Dr. Wilson um, also had representatives there as well. Thank you. Thank oh, you. and in terms of timeline, so between uh, so in June, uh, we'll be having the, the second um, data presentation, and then there'll be a series of meetings. I don't know when and how often over the summer, uh, probably into the fall, um, to identify the learnings that we have and then uh, come to consensus about what sort of um, opportunities for policy change uh, are, are will be made available. Uh, again, this is something that um, each one of the in entities is, is looking both at their own policies and practice as well as the connections between and among them. And I think that's where, uh, at least from my perspective, I think there are opportunities for the greatest efficiencies is looking at how we, for example, how we move people from SPD to, uh, to CCC or what happens when folks are in CCC and, and how, you know, the, the adjudication process happens between the DA and the uh, public defenders and the judges. I, I think there's a lot of discussion that's going on in, in, the, in that realm as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Costman. Commissioner Epperson. Uh, will this group be amenable to uh, supporting that millage relative to this deficit we have at the Juvenile Detention Center? Um, I'm just becoming aware of that. I think one of the concerns that we have right now is, is understanding um, the, uh, the available resources and where they can be allocated to, to make the, the, the greatest impact. So uh, I understand that the, 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 um, there's a deficit at, at the Juvenile Justice Center right now. Right. I guess my hope is that, uh, that this process could create additional uh, support for um, uh, dollars if they're necessary to make changes to, to improve the overall system. So I, I guess um, my hope is that... That, that deficit has been... Uh, how, how long has that deficit been in place? Uh, 40 years. Dr. Wills? Can you state the question, please? How long has that deficit we've been paying on that juvenile detention center? 15, 20 years. 15. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Epperson. Um, I'll ask uh, one question. So the, um, or maybe I'll ask a couple. Uh, you said that the problems in our criminal justice system may require funding. Um, I think many of us know that it requires funding. What are the odds do you, that you, would you say that it doesn't require funding? Or can we confidently say that it requires funding? Well, I, I, think, I think it probably does. I think the, the real question, though, is what elements and in what ways. And I think that's, you know, again, the, uh, I'm a data geek, and so my, my preference is to come with data and information that allows us to, to make policy choices. I think, um, you know, the cardiac test, I know in my heart we need this, is, is, is always helpful. But my hope is that what we're able to do is to define uh, with some exactitude uh, the kinds of support that are needed by different elements in the system. Um, I think that's important certainly for, for the voting public to know how those dollars are being uh, raised and spent. And I think it also would be helpful as a way to demonstrate support for the various entities within the criminal justice system whose additional support is required or who, for whom additional support is required. Thank you. Can we, um, can we get together and set up meetings with interested commissioners and the CJI Certainly. Uh, yes. Agents who are here. Yes. Um, it, Great. I'm happy to. Uh, we can Maybe um, perhaps uh, Mr. Clerk, could you help facilitate those meetings for us? Maybe email everyone and see if they're interested. 
Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jackson, you have a question. Yes, yeah, thank comment. you. Is the CJI, is, the, is this the initiative that the city of Shreveport started out? We had this big Zoom call with some folks. Mm, I don't believe so. So this, this is not that. Okay. No. I remember there was something going on uh, about a year ago, maybe, where. Right. We had the, we, we had the juvenile uh, justice conversation that, you know, that um, mm -hmm. Commissioner Watts and Commissioner okay. um, Talaferro were involved with. But uh, that was all. I mean, Commissioner uh, Gage Watts participated a couple of times by gotcha. Zoom, but it was mostly face to face. Okay. Now, this is a big group of folks, and I know the city of Shreveport hosted it, and I think. Money more kind of I, I just yeah. it was a I remember them calling themselves CJI or something or CJ something but it was a grant that they received and they were getting this feedback and input but you're saying this is not that no sir okay uh, my other question I guess is more to staff you've heard Dr. Magner uh, information you know where we are with resolution I think 22 or 23 today uh, is it 23 or resolution 22? 22 22 resolution 23 <laughs> uh, uh, do y'all, because I mean, I, I thought at some, I would have thought at some point, do y'all see that there's a need to slow down? Because it seems like these two can work in concert to me. I would have thought staff would have said, hey, let's slow down and wait on them or something like that. But I never heard that from staff. No, we never get that okay. Okay. So y'all still seem fine about where we are today. Okay. I, just, I was just curious about that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Uh, Looks like there are no other requests to speak on the board. Thank you very much, Dr. Magner. Thank you uh, so much. I hope to follow up with you soon about meeting with these folks. Definitely, we'll do that. Thank you. Thing. Thank you, Dr. Magner. All right, our next. Okay. That brings us to, uh, to reports where uh, we have an administrative report attached. Okay. Dr. Wilson. Okay, good afternoon, commissioners. Hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, we have 22 kids in, in the detention center today. We have nine awaiting OJJ transport. We have five of the, uh, of the 22 or 17 year olds, and we have 15 uh, children at CCC. Uh, COVID, uh, no reported uh, in infections in the last couple of weeks. And today we do have an update uh, request uh, from the Industrial Development Board, Cal Industrial Development Board. Commissioner Epson wanted to know um, some information on what they, they were doing. So I did invite today Mr. Uh, Attorney William Bradford. He is the vice chair of the uh, IDB board to kind of give us an update on what things going with the IDB board and what it's staying. Welcome, Mr. Bradford. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Vice President and mm -hmm. members of the commission. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Thank you for uh, being here, sir. Absolutely. Uh, I, as Dr. Wilson said, I sit as the vice chairman of the Industrial Development Board for Caddo Parish. Uh, we are a function of the Parish of Caddo to the extent that we help to develop economic development opportunities. We participate uh, when needed with some financial participation. We also help to manage uh, some of the lease arrangements on behalf of the city, uh, on behalf of the Parish of Caddo. Uh, right now, uh, we have, I'm sorry for going to my phone, but it's the quickest place to find my notes sometimes. Um, right now, we have pilot arrangements, and those are payment in lieu of tax arrangements with Amazon, Ivan Smith Manufacturing Facility, Ivan Smith, Ivan Smith Manufacturing Facility Expansion, the GM Facility, Libby Glass, uh, the Halston Travel Center, Honeywell UO, UOP, and Glovis. And to date, over the last 20 years, these pilots have generated about a billion dollars in economic development for the Parish of Caddo. Um, the, uh, there's also a subcommittee of this. It's an economic development subcommittee. Uh, we met as recently as today. We are developing a uh, gap funding process for small emerging businesses and, and businesses that are seeking to grow and expand uh, to help participate. We are creating a pre-application and application process that will allow a very fair process and deliberative public process to occur so that we can participate in helping small businesses and growing businesses expand uh, as a function of our IDB uh, uh, authority. And so that's the general overview. Of course, we've seen a lot of good updates lately. Amazon is coming online. Uh, we took a tour of that. Uh, members of the IDB took a tour of that about two weeks ago. Uh, it's an amazing facility. I think you all probably had an opportunity to, to, to view that facility. Um, we also have seen that uh, there's some additional leasing going on at the GM plant. Uh, so th those projects, those, those uh, economic development driver, drivers for our community are, are online and working, and uh, we'll continue to keep you updated as quickly as possible if you have any questions. Uh, that's 
a fair extent of what we have to report right now, but if you have any questions, I'm here, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you, Mr. Bradford. Um, Commissioner Atkins has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bradford, thank you for your efforts on behalf of the Industrial Development Board. We appreciate yes. your service there. Um, you mentioned the gap funding for smaller businesses. What what size businesses do you envision that being? I mean, is that a total startup or is that an established business that's trying to get to the next level? So, so there are triggers in the application process, which we'll share with you all once the board has uh, formally adopted those procedures. Um, effectively, we do not have a high limit on you know the capital investment or capital ability of the company. It is really a, a project-specific determination. Okay. Um, and we want to be able to participate, whether it's, you know, helping to build a parking lot. I mean, we, we have any number of triggers within that process that uh, a small, medium, or larger business can, can apply to get that gap funding on. Now, that is separate and apart from our larger asks that come to the IDB on a regular basis for much larger projects. This is the idea of this is to help our local businesses continue to grow and thrive. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, President. William, thanks for the report on that uh, seed funding. Where is the where is the funds originating from? Those are all proceeds that come back from the pilots, uh, the pilot lease agreements, um, and any of the fees that are collected to the IDB. Um, those dollars sit with the IDB and are utilized and deployed into economic development projects now. And so we had a um, pretty good sizable balance that we determined as a board would be best utilized to reinvest into the community. And so we had to develop this process in order to make it fair and equitable uh, for anyone to apply. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, President. Thank you, Commissioner Chavez. Commissioner Epperson. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'd just like to ask uh, Mr. Bradford, if you would, oftentimes so many people ask us as commissioners about these boards. They don't hear anything that's going on, you know. So if uh, the administrator mentioned that, you know, I requested, but I request on behalf of the citizens. Yes, sir. And I would like maybe if you would take this back to your board and say uh, quarterly, just come down and and uh, let the commission know us if something's going on good. If it isn't, you know what I mean? Because it, it, it appears to me that I've been uh, getting this request, having this request a couple of months or so, and I understood it, it was having trouble uh, finding somebody or wondering what to know, know the nature of, of them coming here. But the nature of them coming here because we've appointed members uh, to that board uh, to let the citizens know what they are doing on their behalf, plain and simple. And I would ask that you would ask your board maybe every quarter just come down to the commission and give us a report. You shouldn't have to ask. Just to let the citizens know what's going on. Yes, sir. And I'll make sure that that's added into our um – I don't know if it needs to be done by resolution, but however it needs to happen, it'll happen for you. And, um, you know, as also as the chairman of the, the Economic Development Committee within the IDB, I'll make sure to come back quarterly as well and give you updates because I think it's going to be very important to see how the Small Business Economic Development Grant Program develops and get your input directly from the commissioners and see, you know, to make sure, one, it's performing the way you want it to perform, and two, drive your input as well here in a public forum. So, yes, sir, we'll make sure that that happens. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Epperson. Uh, Mr. Bradford, I would like to speak with you after this meeting at sure. your convenience about a local company that wants to expand here and could use your advice and assistance. Yes, and sir. Commissioner Chavez is very interested in this project as well. Okay. Do you want me to wait for the meeting today or do you want to no, contact just, me? Just shoot me an email or okay. contact Okay. Yes, sir. Me. Terrific. Thank yes. you so much. Absolutely. Any other questions? That looks like everyone. Thank you so much, okay. Mr. Thank Bradford. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dr. Wilson, is that the end of your report, or do you have more? Uh, yeah, I was going to, uh, as a caveat to what Attorney Bradford was saying, uh, one of the successful projects we've had was the Travel Center up in Houston. They're due to open in um, July. And I talked to the developer last Friday, and he said they're going to add another taco, they're going to add a taco bell to that location. They're going to add a car wash, truck wash to that location. So it's very um, beneficial tool for the parish to continue to use the IDB board. And also in the same conversation, he said he had another project for a $30 million project, 125 jobs. And I may mention to him that he should talk to the IDB boards to start. And he used to use them before. So it's a great tool. So maybe we can talk about those kind of projects to the community when they develop. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. That concludes my report, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I believe we're up to communiques. Anyone wish to make a remark? Commissioner Jones. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, this Thursday, KOK is having their prayer breakfast for community leaders 
Uh, it's at 7 a.m. Um, at New Creation Family Life Church on Kingston Road. The keynote speaker will be uh, Dr. Joe Gant. Our uh, commission president is on to give greetings for the president, and uh, I'm participating as well. If you all um, don't mind getting up that early, maybe some of you are already up. We'll be there at 7 a.m. Thursday morning for uh, the KOK's community prayer breakfast. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. That is an early request, but <laughs> I'm sure some of us will try to make it. Uh, Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, President. Uh, I wanted to give Kelvin a, a shout out. Uh, I know Mr. Euler came up about his dog, Cece, and when I saw the information, I, I text Kelvin, and uh, to my surprise, he already said he knew about it, and he was on it, and he had the guys looking, and I said, man, these guys are awesome. So. I wanted to give him a shout out, so thank you, Dr. Wilson. And then mm -hmm. Mr. Weaver, um, I know we always do these neighborhood cleanups in Southern Hills, and sometimes you probably think we're nuts because we're always asking for all this stuff. Well, I want to give you a shout out. Last, last weekend when the cleanup happened for the, the clean up the boot, um, last minute on a Friday, we had a, a second grade volunteer to, to show up, and we needed some vests. Uh, so I wanted to let you know that, that your efforts don't go unnoticed, that um, they called freaking out, and it just so happened, Dr. Wilson, that uh, Mr. Weaver supplied us with about 30 vests the time before that we didn't need that time but this time they were brand new ready to go and uh they were super excited because they were worried about the kids walking in the streets without the vest but we had them uh, on, on the ready thanks to mr weaver so thanks for always supporting us and for our cleanups in southern in southern hills thank you sir thanks president thank you commissioner chavez commissioner cothran i would also like to thank mr weaver as well uh in the southern hill area uh about two weeks ago on the cleanup there was supposed to be another organization to come and remove all the uh, debris and trash that was picked up, but it didn't happen. And Mr. Weaver had his guys to come and actually relocate, take it to the dump and things of this nature. So, and it was very short notice. And I just wanted to personally thank him as well. Thank you, Commissioner Cothran. I would also like to thank uh, Assistant Director Kelvin Samuel for his uh, rapid response uh, this week. Okay, uh, I see no one else on the board, so the next item is President's Report. There's no President's Report today. Uh, and then we have old business, and there's no old business today, and that brings us to new business. Mr. Clark. First item is 11.1, advancing the introduction of Ordinance 6327 of 2023. That's relative to MPC or the Parish Zoning Commission case 22-37-BAP. Uh, that's an ordinance to amend volume two of the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of Caddo as amended the Caddo Parish Unified Development Code by amending the zoning of property located on the west side of Wallace Lake Road, approximately 780 feet south of Overton Brooks Road in Caddo Parish, Louisiana, from RA Rural Agricultural Zoning District to RA PUD, a Rural Agricultural Planned Unit Development Zoning District, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Commissioner. Oh, I see. I have a motion uh, from Commissioner Jackson, second from Commissioner Jones. Uh, Commissioner Jackson, do you want to speak? Commissioner Atkins, you're on the board. Okay, I don't see a sponsor on here. I am sorry. I did notice that just now, um, but that is in District 9. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a, a substitute motion that we delay until the MPC is ready to move this issue forward. Um, if I can get a second. There's a Thank second very from much. Commissioner Cothran. Um, Thank you for the second, uh, Commissioner Jones. I might ask Mr. Clark if he would step up and just explain quickly why why a delay might be helpful, just so we can hear it from the I won't, from the professional's mouth. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I'd just like to share with you that uh, at, at the meeting of the Caddo Parish Planning and Zoning Commission. They made a, a series of stipulations in their recommendations for approval. And at that meeting, uh, we had shared with them that uh, the, we could uh, possibly transmit the, their approval the next day, but we were not ready to uh, transmit that. And somewhere in the process, communication broke down. Uh, so cause we have not pulled together all of the different stipulations that they recommended uh, for this approval and we're asking uh, to allow us to revisit this uh, this recommendation and, and foster it into a format that you would be able to act upon. 
And Mr. If, if it's okay, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Clark will ask you to let us let me know or the clerk know whoever is the appropriate person when, when you're ready to move forward. Absolutely, and and it should not take that long. But uh, uh, we have, we had we had even forecast that it should be uh, available for final uh, action by you the first meeting in June. Uh, we were not even forecasting that it would be here today, but uh, it just fell through the cracks and got here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Atkins. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Okay, next item, Mr. Clark. Well, if I could, to be clear, um, for that. Oh, oh sorry, we need, to, uh, we need to vote on this um, Correct. substitute well, motion. We need to vote on this, um, on Commissioner Atkins' uh, motion. Um, and I just wanted to make sure, uh, are, we, uh, are we postponing this to our next work session to be considered, no. or are we, um, Putting, moving this to the table or we're moving, moving it to the table until mr. Clark asks us to pull it off okay thank you okay let's vote <clears throat> and that motion carries with ten in support none in opposition um, that right. brings us to 11.2 advancing the introduction of ordinance 6328 of 2023, that's an ordinance amending and reenacting Chapter 32, Article 6 of the Cattle Parish Code of Ordinances, repealing Sections 32 to 52 and Sections 34-22. I'm sorry, 32-52 and 34-22 of the Code of the Cattle Parish Code of Ordinances, and otherwise providing with respect thereto. These are relative to noise, uh, and they were. This is a recommendation of the uh, Natural Resources Committee. Okay, I have a motion by uh, Commissioner Jackson, second by Commissioner Jones. Uh, Commissioner Jackson, do you want to speak? Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Atkins, you're on the board. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to be clear for, this, for the benefit of, of industry personnel that may be in the room or listening. Uh, this would come up for a final vote on May 18th, is that correct? It, it, that would be the earliest it could be adopted. Okay. Um, and uh, certainly, you have you know, should there be additional conversation or whatever, you have the opportunity to postpone it or, yeah. or something like that, but that would be the earliest time it could be adopted. Okay, I just wanted, wanted the industry personnel to know that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank and you, Commissioner And just for Atkins. reference, I did get a couple of questions from uh, several individuals today about the timeline of this, and, and I have shared that. So. Oh, and I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Sure. Ms. Frazier, I guess you've been in conversation with some people about, did they transmit some concerns to you, and how, how will we know about that? Um, that is correct. Some industry personnel have transmitted some concerns to me. I've informed them of the earliest date of passage, um, as well as all the dates that they should be on the agenda for introduction. And it may be helpful um, if the Natural Resources Committee was to meet between now and the date of final passage, if uh, in case they're they want to express concerns. I've also asked them um, if they had some areas identified where there were going to be problems um, to please let me know so that we can get in touch with the consultant and kind of try to address those. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Atkins. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you. Uh, I'm just looking at the um, back sheet and it has some foreign language on it. So <laughs> if we could actually clear that up. Because um, I don't speak that. I don't. I can't. It looks it, like so. Thai. <laughs> I don't know okay. if it happens in the conversion over or what, but uh, mm -hmm. see if we can actually clear that up. So it's, it's all English. I, I didn't. It, it wasn't me because I don't speak it either. So. <laughs> all right, I so think I think we, one of our we word need processing. To know what we it, it, it's from word processing. No, I can't learn. Yeah. yeah. So. It's, it's okay. not Chinese or Japanese. I don't know what it is. We'll, Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll print it out and then scan. I think that's what happens is that some versions of Word aren't compliant with the current version of PDF. So the Adobe puts it in whatever language that is. I don't know it either. But, okay. <laughs> but we'll print it out and scan it back in. Okay. So I think we're ready for a vote on this topic. I think we're ready. Okay. And that motion carries with nine in support, one in opposition, and two absent. That brings us now to uh, advancing the consideration of resolution number 22 of 2023. That's a resolution ordering and calling a special election to authorize the levy of a special tax therein. 
and that's making application to the State Bond Commission and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Just as a brief reminder, this item, unlike many resolutions, you advertised a public hearing on this to be held at your Thursday meeting uh, two weeks ago, much like you would typically do with an ordinance that's in compliance with uh, the way um, the Bond Commission uh, requires. So, um, it is a little different than your typical process. Thank you, Mr. Though. Clerk. I have a motion from uh, Commissioner Jones, second from Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Jones, you wish to speak? Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice President. Um, met on this uh, earlier today, and um, just from the conversation and the concerns that I think that all of us have uh, about the place that we live and that we love, we want to make sure that uh, it's safe, that our children are safe, that our children can thrive, um, and also to just to make sure that matters are clear, we're making sure that the citizens' voices are being heard in this matter. And so um, I'm asking everyone to support us moving this forward. Um, I think we are just at a place uh, in our city's history where this has to be done. We're, we're just, uh, we have to have it. My understanding, Dr. Wilson, is that we've been at a deficit longer than I've been living um, for about 40 years. I know I look older than that when I don't shave, but um, for you know 40 years to be at a deficit and be operating like that is just unhealthy for anybody, for any entity. Um, if we were just managing our household to be at a deficit for 40 years, it would be very bad. And what, what we would end up doing is, is raising children to believe it's okay to live at a deficit. And so uh, when you put it on a much larger scale, when we're talking about the parish, we just can't continue to operate that way. And so um, I think, you know, it's incumbent upon us to all do what we can to make sure that we live in a place that's safe, that attracts young people here to want to stay here, uh, for those that are from here, and for those that are not from here to want to be attracted to our parish, to work here and live here and, and open up businesses here. And the state that we're in right now, I don't think they're going to be willing to do that. So we must do what we need to do um, as a parish, as citizens, as commissioners, to make sure that we are in the best possible position um, to live in a place that we can all call home and appreciate. So I'm asking you all to support this uh, so that we can advance this forward. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Jackson. Yes, thank you, Mr. Acting President. Uh, just as a point of clarity, I think we have to make sure that we note that this would be, an, um, there, there was an amendment adopted, so we would be moving this forward as amended. Uh, the amendment was to uh, the original recommendation was to do a 20-year millage um, in the spirit of compromise, and staff had no problem with this. Is to move it was to move it from 20 years to 15 years, um, and so they were fine with it. I think they much rather the 20-year um, uh, time frame, which would uh, basically help lower the cost. But I think they feel like they can get it done. Uh, with the 15 years so that was uh, and then the original millage uh, we didn't have to do an amendment for this but it's important to know that the original mill that was suggested was five uh, this is only three and a half so uh, and then the final uh, cl point of clarity that I'd like to offer up is that uh, uh, if this moves to Thursday and if this is adopted the Commission the parish we're not raising or levying a new tax we're asking citizens if this is something that they would like to do. So that's all this is, is we're putting this ultimately in the folks who elect us hands is, and ask them, is this something that they would like to get behind? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Cawthron. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, juvenile uh, committee who worked for approximately a year and a half, almost two years, uh, formulating some of the information that we're talking about at this time. The thing is, and I'll be very forthright with everyone here, uh, I was very ambivalent until the meeting today uh, where a lot of transparency came about this particular uh, ordinance that we're talking about. And the thing is, is that as a citizen, as a elder in this parish, in this community, in this city, there is not enough money that I could ever make to not take care of a child. What I'm saying in essence is that each and every young person mm -hmm. in this parish is worth whatever amounts of dollars that this millage could possibly bring. 
because everyone wants to see the crime go down. But the one thing that I would say, and what I heard most of all today, was the preventive mode. Nobody wants a young person to be locked up, absolutely no one. But the thing is, again, there are some things that we could put in place as far as prevention that would possibly come out of this particular ordinance if we get this millage going forward. So I say again, as previously stated, I support this going forward, and I hope the rest of the citizens do as well. Thank you, Commissioner Cawthron. Commissioner Johnson. Uh, thank you, uh, Acting President. Um, I have a concern about raising taxes, new taxes. Uh, to me, it's sort of like a last resort. Um, I proposed an ordinance not too long ago to have uh, radar on parish roads that was defeated. That was a way to generate money. It could have generated the same $5.2 million and even more. Uh, this $5.2 million still will have juvenile services in a deficit. I'm not going to take it out of the tips. Uh, and I think that we should use things that we can do to, to bring revenue into the parish as opposed to uh, uh, bringing on new taxes. Uh, so I won't be supporting it at this wrong time. And, you know, 2010, I told my constituents that I wouldn't try to raise new taxes unless it was a last resort. This is not a last resort when there's other things we could do to bring revenue into the parish, and we decided not to do it. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Jones. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm just at a, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm fairly new. I haven't been a commissioner very long, but I'm going to speak from the perspective of a citizen. I hadn't seen a whole lot done when it comes to making things safer here. I just haven't. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something, and maybe somebody needs to tell me, maybe off record or whatever, however it wants to be done. But I just have not seen some real efforts as it relates to making our pair safer and investing in our young people. I think we did the math earlier, and it's going to cost us a whole lot less, somewhere about $15, $16 a year to invest in a child versus the $10,000 it's going to take to try them, arrest them, pay the police officers, pay the judges. I mean, I, for me, it's a no-brainer. We're going to have to either invest on this end or we're going to pay on the back end. You know, uh, as it was said earlier, um, you know, my pastor says you either, you know, pay on the front end or you'll be burying them on the back end. And I have, um, I don't know if I want to say I have the pleasure, but I do have the calling of working in the funeral industry. And I can tell you that we have buried young people for well over $10,000 for parents who didn't have the money. So last resort, whatever, we gotta do something. And until we start bringing stuff to the table to make it work and consistently doing it, consistently bringing things to the table. Here again, if I'm misinformed or uneducated on it, just tell me. I'm, I don't, if I'm wrong, just tell me I'm wrong. But I have not seen a whole lot done from many of the government entities here, whether it be us, the city, whomever, to say, hey, we're, we're going all in on making sure that we save these generations. Here again, there's been a deficit for over 40 years. So we're talking about generations who have been underserved for 40 years. Generations that have not gotten what they needed. We have to do something and we gotta do something right now. It is just as simple as that. I know that a lot of folks uh, saw the incident that happened with SPD and that young man, and it took a lot of attention. But while that was going on, maybe like five more people had been killed. And they're young people. And it's just, I'm, maybe I'm just tired, maybe I'm just frustrated, but I, I, I can't be the only one who feels that we have got to make some type of changes and do something out of the box that we've not done before. If we've been in a deficit since the 70s, how much has changed since then? I was born in 85, so some of y'all gonna have to help me. A lot has changed. A lot has changed since the 90s. Do we have a Crips and Blood problem? No. But we have problems where our young people 
are not getting the resources they need, the folks who are that we're asking to chair juvenile justice and direct juvenile justice don't have the resources they need to be as effective as they want to be. And who are we to put the pressure on Director Walker and Mr. Randall and their staff to get things done when we won't give them the funds and the resources they need to get it done? I don't think that's fair. Now, here again, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, but I haven't seen a whole lot being done as it relates to public safety besides press conferences and crying in front of cameras. Nobody wants to see any more alligator tears. We want crocodile tears. We want to get stuff done. Now, I'm not telling you that as a commissioner. I'm telling you that as a citizen who hadn't had this job that long. People are tired of, well, okay, we don't support this today. Then how long is it going to take us for, to come up with another new idea? And I just, I mean, at what point are we going to have unanimous support behind public safety in our children? At what point? Because if we don't do this today, if somebody else puts up another resolution or ordinance, we're going to have people up here complain about, if it ain't taxes, it's going to be something else. So maybe the children who live near you aren't being affected, but the children that live near me are having a hard time dealing with gunshots and violence around them all the time. The children who live near me are burying their best friends something I never had to do in high school. Not from some gun violence. If I lost a friend in high school, they were sick. They had some type of cancer. And even that scared us half to death. But I never had to bury anybody from gun violence. So yes, I'm frustrated and I'm passionate about it and I think we need to, we need to do something and we have to do it now. I, we, there should not be another incident where a young person is killed here and we act like we're coming together for a week or two and then we thoughts and prayers and we go back to our normal business. What are thoughts and prayers doing? Nothing. It's not saving anybody. And we're not, in, we're not willing to invest $16 per child? $16 for a whole year? $16. That's more than dinner at a restaurant, or less than dinner at a restaurant. And I know some of us have fine taste. So we like to go to steakhouses. I like cigars. I pay more than that for some cigars. $16. So I want us to really think about what we're saying when we're not willing at all to support something. Now, a lady came and stood down here in front of us with that young lady, God bless her uh, soul, died over in Highland and said raising taxes wouldn't be a problem. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people who feel like that. $16. So I hope, you know, that we're, con we're really thinking about what we're, what we're saying when we're saying we won't do this. When we won't do it. Because it's hard for cons constituents to say that we got to do something and then when we're starting to do something, well, we don't we'll want y'all to do it that way. And at the end of the day, they're going to decide if they want this or not. Because this is going on the ballot. Am I right or am I wrong? Isn't this going on the ballot, Dr. Wilson? So they're going to decide either way. It's, we're not raising the taxes. The citizens are making the decision. Amen. Uh, might have just 30 more seconds. The citizens are going to decide if they want to raise these taxes or not. All we're doing is advancing this forward making sure that we get an approval. No one up here is making a decision for the citizens. We are putting something out for the citizens to say, we either want this or we don't. Because guess what? If they vote it down, it cannot be said that we did not do our part to try to make and create some change. If they voted and say, yes, we want it, then no one should be disappointed because the citizens are voting for something that they want. The way the flow chart works here is the citizens of Caddo, then the commissioners. So if they are our bosses, we need to hear from what they want, and they will tell us on the ballot, whenever the election comes up, that we want it or we don't. But I am not going to say I'm not going to do anything, 
and not going to keep sitting by, not doing anything, and just recognizing citizens and not putting any real legislation forward. Those days are done. And we got to quit wasting time and playing with people's emotions. That's just how I feel about it. This ain't personal towards nobody, but we got to do something. And when it comes to children, as a father, I am asking us to take this seriously. If you don't like it today, read over it and find somewhere where you feel like we can add something better. But don't, let's not just cast it down like it doesn't work. Because I know other people feel like they don't want to support this today. But I don't see why not when we need it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Jones, for those heartfelt words. I'm sure they echo the feelings of many hearts. Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, President. <clears throat> Commissioner Jones is right, uh, and heartfelt words is, is true. It, it's one thing to go up in front of a camera and play politics, and, and we hold hands and we hold these prayer sessions, but faith without works is, is dead. And it, it's time that we actually start working together. And this is always going to get to the point where we talk about raising taxes and it comes to Republican, Democrat, uh, partisan. But this is, this is our job around this horseshoe, and this is what we were elected to do, to make these hard decisions. And the thing that I love is coming from, this, from the citizen committee uh, that was commissioned some year and a half ago, that they came together, all walks of life, all different neighborhoods, and they came to us with a conclusion. The conclusion was that we have to fund the juvenile detention center. We have to, file, we have to fund prevention, that those works that we're talking about are, are actions, and those actions cost money, and, the, and that money is not a lot. We, we've heard the figures around this horseshoe, and we've had conservative, conservative views on this where, where even Democrats typically, who, do, who are for raising taxes and Republicans are not, Democrats come up with a concession to say, we don't want five mils, we want three and a half. Democrats around this own hoosier that, that have realized that we need to do this and we need to do this now, and we cannot operate off of a millage off of a budget that was passed in 1957, that it's 2023, that we have a deficit and we have to fund it. And how do we fund it? We've come up with the conclusion. The citizen committee has come to us with a recommendation. Together, collectively, we can pass partisan legislation that says, sure, this is raising taxes, but it's raising revenue. It's, raise, it's raising needed revenue to fund our juvenile justice system, to fund prevention, and I don't want to have to echo everything else the commissioner said before me because we, we all know it's either this or that. So we're, we're coming to the citizens to say, this is what the citizen committee, this is what y'all said that you would like. We are, we are basically just ratifying the vote of the citizen subcommittee to say, yes, they're right. We've seen all the research. We've talked to our own experts. And they say we cannot fund, we cannot continue on the way we are going. So we have to do something. So this is our point collectively where we have the chance to put that action to place. To sure, act in faith, but put action to work, to put feet to the fire to say that this is what we're gonna do, and then we leave it in the citizens' hands to see what they're gonna do. A and I have a feeling that they're gonna vote yes, because if anyone's looking around at what's going on in, in our community, and they look at their house, and the average household in Shreveport is 120K, and that average household of 120K is gonna end up having to pay an additional $16, for the safety of their family and their children, I doubt anybody presses no. So I'll be voting yes on this to move it to move it forward. I hope the rest of you vote with us, and I hope the citizens, when they watch this and they get all the all the information that we've compiled and put together, that they understand the severity of this vote and how we, we need to raise this revenue to pay for what we need. Thank you, President. Thank you, Commissioner Chavez. Commissioner Johnson. Mr. Chair. Second time. Uh, uh, yes, I Mr. Epperson. Oh, I see. Yes, you're right. Um, uh, Commissioner Johnson, would you mind waiting for Commissioner Epperson's first round? Protocol is first round. First. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Epperson. Uh, call for the question on the motion. Second. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to speak on that? No. Okay. I think we're ready for a vote on that question. Okay, this is for calling for the question. And that motion carries with nine in support, one in opposition. Uh, so then uh, the question before you is now uh, whether to advance uh, ordinance 
uh, I'm sorry, not ordinance, resolution number 22. Okay, uh, we're ready for the vote. And that is, of course, that uh, advancing that as amended uh, by the uh, uh, by the Natural Resources Committee. Juvenile, sir, Juvenile Justice Committee. I'm sorry, Juvenile Justice Committee. And uh, for the record, that uh, your, your attached document is the correct version with their edits. So what's on your agenda attached there uh, is that most recent. And that motion carries with seven in support, three in opposition, and two absent. Uh, that brings us now to uh, 11.4, which is advancing a special resolution of recognition and appreciation for utility linemen. Okay, I have a motion from Commissioner Jackson, second by Commissioner Cothran, and uh, Mr. Epperson is on the board. Commissioner Jackson, Jackson do you wish to speak? Uh, yes, uh, I was going to just in the interest of time and people can chime in on them if they want to, but I'd like to make a motion, a substitute motion to in global and advance all uh, special resolutions as well as advance the appointment to the Shreveport Bolger Sports Commission, um, advance the authorization of administration to fund Juneteenth activities, advance special resolution of child, oh, all special resolutions, including this one, uh, Child Stroke Awareness Month, and I guess we can strike this one from Dr. Magna, right? Yes. So that would happen today. And advance the Animal Service Board of Appeals. Okay. So there's a motion to englobe all those items in Section 11 uh, and a second. Um, Commissioner Jackson, do you want to speak on your motion? I'm just trying to, if anybody wants to speak individually on them or have questions or comments individually on them or want to take one off or something, but okay, great. just trying to move us along. Commissioner Epperson. No. Uh, Commissioner Chavez, do you wish to speak? Uh, no, I think that's previous. Okay. Commissioner Johnson, you're also on the board. Do you wish to speak? Yeah, on the uh, advancement of the appointment, I want to make sure that we uh, reappoint Chantel Hardison to the board of the Sports Commission. That's my amendment to that motion. And then... Um, that's who it is. I, it is, it's not written that way, so I want to make oh, it clear. It's kind of unclear. Oh, okay. it's, it's a reappointment of that, that particular person. And then um, I'd like to know some more information about 1110 between now and Thursday. Okay. What's 1110? So it's about the Juneteenth. That's the action. Oh, Erica will have some more information after the meeting tomorrow. You going to the meeting tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, yeah I'd just like to have some between now and, and Thursday when we vote on That's all. Okay. Uh, that's everyone on the board. I think we're ready to vote. Yeah. All right. And that motion carries with nine in support, none in opposition. Uh, and that brings us now to communiques and committee reports. All right. Would anyone like to speak in communiques or committee reports? I don't see, uh, there's Commissioner Jackson, were you yeah. on the board? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Erica, if you want to, I don't know if Patrick Wesley is available, but if you, I don't know if y'all want to send somebody to that, but Shrek is convening the group tomorrow. Yes, uh, I received the email. Okay. I'm still to okay. Okay, and uh, that's kind of what we did last year. I think the recommendation was to take it from ARPA funds that were already allocated or whatever, but I think y'all would come up with whatever we needed to do. Um, no appropriations to any groups, but just making sure. No, no fireworks this year either. <laughs> but, but also making sure that we, as we stated at that meeting, that the festival is the, I think they are very clear that the festival is the big ticket, is the meal ticket on the block, and everybody else is going to have to fall in line. And, um, you know, whatever it is about a parade or something, I just, I, I do think that, some other we do need to see where other entities are bringing actual dollars to the table um, as opposed to you know the commission funding the bulk of it so we did discuss that at the meeting and i want to put that at the record at the first meeting so um but i don't think i'm gonna make it over to erica but if y'all could could okay. go yeah um and also um can i get an update uh, not today, but in between now and maybe Thursday, or just as soon as y'all can on the uh, the uh, Shreveport Green issue in Cherokee Park yeah. uh, with the catchments and stuff. 
uh, how much we want to do, where we want to go with it. Yeah, so, forty thousand. Okay, well, so they can whittle that down. Okay. The cleanup is forty seven hundred, mm -hmm. and the uh, the equipment she estimated to be forty thousand. Is that the catchments or just the equipment for the cleanup? I think the equipment for the cleanup to remove the trees and stuff. Okay. Could we possibly maybe ask? Yeah, um, I, I the city, if they, if they don't mind taking care, I know they have the stuff to clean out those ditches. Mm -hmm. they, I think they had the equipment in-house. Uh, I'm seeing Ken sitting back there. Okay. He's got his shirts back on. Uh, okay. But uh, uh, we have my actual skirt is on the on the um, <coughs> Jarvis, I think is right. Yeah, Jarvis uh, is the person who's the contact on that. Okay. Yeah. So, if we could, but if, we, if you just let me know where we are on it. I appreciate y'all's willingness to do that. I also want to say uh, I appreciate those folks, and I know we'll have some additional discussions uh, on Thursday, but um, I know I saw a couple of members, they may be gone from the Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, who took their time out over the last year and a half to uh, look at this criminal justice uh, issue. And uh, I heard Commissioner Chavez and Commissioner Jones say it that, um, they brought these recommendations back to us, and we're simply just uh, managing a process to get it to their peers, which are the citizens of, of Caddo Parish. So um, I, I know we've already thanked them, but just as chair of the uh, Juvenile Justice Committee, uh, I'll, I always want to just reiterate um, uh, my thanks and appreciation to them. Um, Dr. Wilson, we discussed some issues about juvenile in that committee. If you could get with the team so that they can make sure that we follow up, I think we'll probably schedule another committee meeting uh, later this month <laughs> uh, to, to, to follow up on that because it's a real um, complex issue and I know where staff is. I know staff has their position. I know the judges have their position. But I'd like to see maybe if we can move everybody to the middle. <laughs> Um, and develop some type of practice. But I get both sides of it, and I, I, I fully understand both sides. But if we could discuss what possibilities may be there, and it may not be in it, and I respect that, but at least have a discussion in earnest, please. Thank you, Mr. And good, good report on KTBS yesterday, too, so uh, hometown hero. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Acting President. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Uh, anybody else on the board? Okay, I don't see anyone else on the board. That brings us to citizens' comments, late arrivals. Receive right. no requests. Uh, I, I have none. Did you hand me one? Move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All right, this meeting is adjourned.